Hi, my name is Elle, and I really wanted to address the question that came up in the Philadelphia Experiment um, episode. Uh, I loved it, by the way, but you guys had a lot of questions about, um, by you guys that refer to the boys on the pod, but maybe other people as well. Um, there were a lot of questions about light, the bending of light, and cloaking technology, and what's real and what's physical. And um, as a as a physicist, um, I kind of like was uh, was exploding in nerd excitement energy to try to like answer the question. So I decided to like do this. Here is my quick explain like I'm five kind of style video. Um, there's a couple of basic things I really want to explain before we get into the cloaking specifically, but um, in an essence cloaking is real and I just want to like kind of explain like what I mean by that. <clears throat> so quick, I wrote notes so I don't talk for too long. What is cloaking tech and how does it work? Cloaking is a real technology that's been pursued by material science and photonics fields of physics. Um, so I am an astrophysicist and I have studied lots of electromagnetism slash I used to teach electromagnetism. Um, I have, uh, I currently have one degree that is, I have a bachelor's of science degree in astrophysics from San Francisco State University. I have to finish my thesis, I'm in the middle of my thesis for my master's degree, which is just in general physics. And I'm currently in a PhD program. I just started my first year. Um, at the City University of New York, which is also in general physics right now. But um, <clears throat> my research background is mostly from stellar astrophysics and exoplanet work, um, but I am still an astrophysicist, not an astronomer, strictly, so I put a lot of emphasis on the physics study. So just a, just a heads up, but I am not a, in photonics and I'm not a mat sci guy. So I'm not a material science person. So a lot of that is really just from me learning about it in classes and talking to colleagues. So I'm not like in the know, but <laughs> I figured I could explain some things. So the two topics that we need to briefly understand to get what cloaking technology is, are A, what is light and how do we think about and define it in physics, particularly in optics and photonics? And B, what is a waveguide? <clears throat> so for the first one, what is light? How do we think about it and define it in physics? So in the most simple terms, light is an energy that is radiated from a source. <laughs> <laughs> um, you may have heard of wave particle duality, which means you could describe light as a particle source, which we use a photon, or a wave, which is an electromagnetic wave. Um, for this case, we're just going to stick with the electromagnetic wave formalism and ignore the quantized photon particle. So we're not talking about photons, we're just going to ignore that they exist for a little bit. So if it's a wave, what is it made of? Um, the electromagnetic wave is, may, is a culmination of an oscillating magnetic field and an oscillating electric field, which it looks like this. It's a very cool plot, and I'll put it in the video somewhere. <laughs> um, so we could think of this overall EM wave, and I'm using EM for electromagnetism, um, as one regular wave represented by our favorite plot, the sine wave. So sine waves are great. We use them all the time and we're just gonna imagine it as a sine wave. <clears throat> there are lots of details I can go into about how different light waves look and what that means physically, but the most important detail is the wavelength represented by variable lambda. So the wavelength, um, which is a unit inverse to frequency for those in the frequency domain, my bros in the frequency domain, the wavelength of light gives you the information about what part of the EM spectrum that the wave is in. So with a really, so it's pretty much how long from, you could either go from top to top or bottom to bottom, whichever is your favorite, That's, that distance is the wavelength. It is a physical distance measurement of a wave. You could think of ocean waves. I, I used to teach this, so I have a lot of little metaphors, <laughs> but a lot of EM talk comes from water, and so like you can think of ocean waves and how you can imagine like waves in the ocean have all these peaks. You can measure a physical distance from one peak to the other peak, and that would be the wave like of an ocean wave, similar to a light wave where you can measure from peak to peak and then get the wavelength of an electromagnetic wave. <clears throat> 
And so on the longer side of our light spectrum, if we have a really, really long wavelength on the order of a thousand meters, we are talking about radio waves. Radio waves have really, really, really wide wavelengths. And on the smaller side, we have gamma rays, and we're talking on the order of 10 to the negative 12 meters. <clears throat> So these regimes are all good to know for various reasons, such as blocking out radio waves or like radio astronomy, <laughs> talking about astronomy, um, looking for gamma ray bursts in space. Again, a lot of my examples are space based, but that's fine. Um, but we're going to focus on the fact that the optical range, the only part that we can see with our little eyeballs, is in the nanometer range, which is 10 to the negative 9 meters, if you were unaware. <clears throat> so when we talk about light, let's just think about a silly little sine wave that obeys all the wave mechanics that we expect it to. And if you don't understand what that means when I say all the wave mechanics, that's totally okay. I'm just hand waving it to save some time. So... Second part, what is a waveguide? Um, so we have a light wave now, and what can we do with it? <laughs> so one such thing we can devise in a lab is a waveguide. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a thing that guides waves. <laughs> in part, we're talking about light waves in particular, but some examples of these things in our like day-to-day -day life is optic fiber cables, a cable that can guide optic light signals carrying data to a receiver that you want it to, right? You can plug it into a computer and now the, the optic fiber, the fiber that can contain optics, light, can, you could just, you know, just put it, let's follow the cable. It's a waveguide. Um, a more sound-based waveguide is like a stethoscope um you know the thing the doctor puts in the ears and listens to all your jellied insides or whatever um and like that is a waveguide for sound so you could put it up to your heart and it t guides the sound waves to your ears so waveguides is a really simple concept um so a waveguide works by and i'm going back to the optical regime again um it works by limiting the transmission of the wave to keep it within the guide so light emits naturally in a, like a very radial direction. So imagine you have a point source, like a star in space, um, and the light from that star, sorry, that's my cat in the background. <laughs> but the light from the star is going to radiate outwards evenly, equally, in every direction in 3D space, right? It's, that's what we use the term radial, it's just like, in a, if you imagine a sphere around your point source, that's going to go out in a radial direction. <clears throat> so the waveguide takes this radial emission and just blocks it off and goes, no, 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 you can't go out this way, you can only go this way, right? Like, think of it going through a tube. <laughs> that's how I like to think about it. Um, and so you can limit the transmission of the light to effectively guide where the light is going. So that's what a waveguide is. So light transmission is an aspect of both the specific light wave and the material that can be controlled in laboratory conditions using the Fresnel equations. So when I talk about limiting the, trans the transmission of light, we understand from an optics, electromagnetic point of view that light transmission is a very knowable um, variable and so you can limit it it it, does, it is dependent on like angles snell's law um things like this but if you look at the fresnel equations you can really kind of like get a very clear picture on the math of it but we can really understand it it's very well studied and so that's why we can essentially make something transmissible or intransmissible in a laboratory condition um, an example of something changing, we could also change the transmissibility of, of materials. It's a pretty common thing is like, um, just think you could think of like a glass, like a window that sometimes you can see through, but you can change it. You could put an electric current through it or something. And, you know, maybe it is no longer, you can't see through it anymore. And that is changing the transmissibility of the material. So it's something in a laboratory condition that's very controllable. <clears throat> so 
So now that we know about what light is and what a waveguide is, we can ask, what is cloaking? Is it real? If so, how does it work? <laughs> like, so to answer the first part of the question, is cloaking real? Yes, mostly. Cloaking tech has been a pretty hot field of photonics and material science for the past 20 years or so. So there's obviously a lot of reasons why an effective tool to making something like a person or a jet invisible would be valuable to many people. And let's be honest, the militaries of the world. Um, for the most part, it is being realized slowly. Um, there have been some amazing demonstrations of effective cloaking technology from the past 20 years, and it seems like the field is really getting to the point that they want it to be at. Um, though I have no idea about labor intensity or cost for large-scale cloaking devices, which I personally imagine would be the limiting factor as of today. So the general idea of optical cloaking, um, and I'm just to be clear, I'm talking about optical cloaking and the cloaking that tricks your eyes, not your sensors. So it's not necessarily like thermal cloaking or like multi, complete total spectrum cloaking, just optical cloaking. <clears throat> um, the goal, the general idea is to bend light around the object that you're trying to cloak. So the idea is that if we only see things that a light beam has reflected off of and is absorbed into our eyes, like that's the way our eyes work. It's like light hits something, it's reflected into our eyeballs and we then understand that we have seen it. Um, so that's the general idea. If we, if the object we're trying to hide never reflects light, then we can't see it. <laughs> so if the, the light beam never hits the thing and then comes back to us, we essentially cannot perceive it visually. So the idea is then to have the light from behind an object able to move in front of it so we see what's behind the object. And I'm really trying to say this as clearly as possible, but I understand that it's going to be a little vague, <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. But you just have to imagine, like, there's a thing, you, there's a thing here, right? But you can see my face, right? Because it's there's nothing actually. But imagine there was something here. The way you would have to be able to see my face is by the light from my face hit it like coming towards you, and instead of being absorbed into whatever this is, instead being flung around and then reflected towards you. That's kind of the idea of like cloaking technology. It's more like misdirecting light beams from where they're supposed to be. Um, it could be considered, um, this is a little hard to explain, I'm throwing this in, but um, we consider real images and virtual images in optics. It's kind of like the idea of a virtual image. A virtual image is like looking into a mirror, and when you look in a mirror, you see yourself in front of you, right? But you are not there, but the image that you perceive is that it is in front of you. It's a virtual image that you see. Um, lenses can do this too, and I, I won't get into the specifics of it, um, but that's the idea. It's almost like taking the idea that there's something in front of you, but you can't see. It's almost like the anti antithesis of a virtual image, but <clears throat> I digress. Again, this is me speculating as an astro person, not an optics person or a photonics person. So if you're a photonics person and you're like, girl, don't say that, I apologize. <laughs> so... This type of thing is possible with current technology, but it tends to be dependent on a series of factors, including temperature, angle of incidence, um, in the sense that it may work when you're looking at something 90 degrees on, but if you look at it from like a 20 degree angle, like it might not work. Geometry, like if you're looking at something cloaked in a flat plane versus something cloaked in a sphere, these types of things will affect what how how invisible it is um amongst other things so in essence all a cloaking device is is a waveguide that can show the image from behind an object in front of it um how one builds that waveguide has a world of possibilities to explore so that's that's my quick little um, quick little explanation of what I think. I know other people have answered this question 
um, in the in the thing. And a lot of people were referring specifically to the bending of light in terms of general relativity and astronomical sense, which again, I would love to talk about, but it clearly it's been like answered. I just didn't see anyone answer it from like a more photonics electromagnetic direction. And I figured like it would just be fun to like share this information because I literally think about this stuff all the time. <laughs> like, so <clears throat> yeah. I'm going to put my references and stuff, um, hopefully they're in the video, but if they're not, I mean, I'll also put them, like, the links to them directly in a comment, hopefully, so, uh, people can, like, check what I'm saying. Um, I just want to just iterate because, I mean, I'm a scientist, I'm a person who's been studying this for, like, 10 years, so I... But I really, really want to, like, encourage you to, like, question what I'm saying. When I bring up things like the Fresnel equations, I'm not using that to trick you. I'm trying to use these words so you can then go and clarify for yourself. If I'm saying something that sounds confusing, um, you know, I want to give you resources so you can, like, see for yourself. Like, definitely don't believe me at face value because, like, be, a, be your own little scientist and, like, check it, you know? Um, I'm trying more to give you words and phrases to, like, go do your own research for than, like, give you a total understanding. So that's, like, what my goal is in case you're, like, ah. Also, I'm definitely hand-waving here. Hand-waving a lot to really just kind of give you the idea of, like, oh, this is, you know, a broad concept. I didn't give you any specifics. I really didn't talk about the math. Um, I didn't want to for the sake of trying to keep it brief, but um, definitely it, I could explain the math to you. I could explain some of this stuff, um, but you could also probably find resources as well to really look into the, the specifics of it because it's all there. Um, I just think sometimes knowing the terms and phrases of places to look is hard. Um, so, some other places I would like to recommend for you to look if you want to look up any other scientific stuff, especially like pop, modern, hot new papers, you know, fresh off the presses type of stuff, um, I recommend archive.org. It's spelled archive, A-R-X-I-V, because it's a Greek chi, but it's, so it looks like A-R-X-I-V. <laughs> archive.org is great if you want to look for, um, any sort of astronomy papers, I would recommend NASA ADS. Um, and those are just like general repositories for papers um, that is are free, they're easy to access, I use them all the time. And so if you're looking just for scientific info, I think it's good for people to know where to find good, reliable information. So there you go. <laughs> uh anyway thanks uh thanks for watching if you watched and i hope you learned something and if you didn't learn something because you're also a physicist what up bro what's up <laughs> don't be mad at me for hand waving so much <laughs> anyway that's it <laughs>